So let's talk about the foods we want to try to avoid. Number one would be animal foods, meat, fish, fowl, eggs, and dairy products. All animal foods suffer from a concern called biological concentration. Day after day, week after week, month after month, animals continue to ingest foods, particularly the foods we feed them full of chemicals or contaminants from the environment, air pollution, water pollution, pesticides on the foods and given to them directly, the drugs they're fed. And they build up in their tissues day after day after week after month. And so when you kill an animal, you eat its entire lifetime accumulation of toxins. Now plants can also have toxins, but they're not as biologically concentrated as animals. So that's why if you do a fat biopsy of a human and you analyze the hundreds of chemicals that are found there in different proportions, you will find that 90, up to 90% of those chemicals got there from eating animal products. So sure, some comes from the environment and, and, and other uh, sources of contamination, but as much as 90% of the average person's load got there from eating animal products. So just adopting a whole plant food diet is gonna dramatically reduce one of your principal sources of toxicity. In addition to the animal foods, we also wanna avoid highly processed foods. That means foods that contain salt, oil, sugar, and oh, guess what, dairy. Dairy has the unique uh, privilege of being listed on both animal food chart and the highly processed food chart because it's not only an animal food with all of its problems, uh, but it also is a highly processed food. It also contains things, for example, dairy products are responsible for a significant percentage of the type 1 diabetes that shows up in your children. Uh, the, uh, in genetically vulnerable kids that are fed those uh, dairy proteins, the immune system becomes confused and begins to attack itself. And that's what destroys the islets of Langerhans and pancreas that's associated with causing type 1 diabetes. It's also why cultures that feed their infants dairy uh, proteins um, have a dramatically higher type 1 diabetic incidence than cultures that don't use milk, you know, as a part of their um, a part of their natural food supply, I think Asian. Um, dairy products also, uh, in addition to the fat, uh, and the uh, chemicals have hormones that are responsible for uh, maturing those cows. So they make more milk faster, but they also have an effect, particularly on our young girls uh, and allow them to become more sexually mature more quickly. And now you'll have girls menstruating at nine or 10 instead of more natural age. And as a consequence, you run into all kinds of problems, not the least of which uh, developing um, uh, sexual maturity without developing emotional maturity. And you can imagine that that leads to some aberrant problems, which of course it does. So the problems with animal foods include bacteria. For example, if you don't cook the dead decaying flesh adequately, you can die because the type of bacteria that live on animals are often the same type of bacteria that live with us. In fact, witness that much of our uh, recurrent rotating infections are associated with our animal husbandry practices where we get exposed to organisms that are bred by animals living in, in oftentimes very, what might be considered inhumane uh, environments. And those organisms pass to us. And you know, also much of the back, uh, antibiotics that we use are used to feed animals and treat animals. And so we help cultivate an environment where they are able to breed antibiotic resistant organisms. In addition to bacteria, you also have viruses. Now, viruses in animal products like bovine leukemia viruses cause cancer in cows, but they'll tell you, don't you worry, you're not a cow. You can't get cancer from cow cancer causing viruses. But it turns out that's not true. And that's exactly what they said to us about prions. You remember in the beginning, they said, oh, don't worry about mad cow disease. That just affects cows until, you know, those young uh, kids in England showed mad cow disease, which was like Alzheimer's and fast forward after being exposed to some hamburger meat that had not been cooked adequately. And so then there was a big scene and they said, okay, fine. We will test the cows. And we tested one out of every 2000 cows for prions. And the problem was they kept finding it. So then they said, well, let's just test one in every 10,000 cows. And maybe that'll help reduce the problem. But they still kept finding. In fact, for a while there, there were countries wouldn't import U.S. beef and whatnot because we were feeding offal, which is sheep brains, to cows. 
And so those organisms were passing on, it was a big mess. Uh, in fact, one of our patients went on the Oprah Winfrey show, the mad cowboy, Howard Lyman, got Oprah to agree to not eat meat. And of course, then meat sales dropped and then the meat industry sued Oprah and she had to spend a million bucks in legal fees to defend herself. It turned out telling the truth uh, accounts for something because they did win their case. But the idea was to stop people talking about all that stuff. I remember the uh, meat processing plant in Texas that there was a scandal because, uh, you know, instead of um, properly discarding downer cows, cows that couldn't walk, they said you couldn't process those because they might have mad cow disease. But instead of processing them, they were shown with a forklift jamming and they're pushing it into the meat slaughter line. And, you know, everybody said, well, that can't be because the FDA has an inspector on the plant at all times. But I don't know, maybe his blinds were closed because he didn't see him. But the person with the iPhone was able to use their iPhone device to videotape this, not just once, but day after day after day. And they, they released this video to the internet. And of course, you can imagine the PETA folks, the uh, people that protect animal rights went crazy because they said, oh, you can't take sentient creatures and torture them like that. And then the health people went crazy because they said, hey, those are downer cows. You can't process those. Those could cause mad cow disease. And everybody made a stink and the Congress got involved. And so they had a recall and they recalled 140 million pounds beef that that plant had produced that month. Fortunately, most of it had already been fed to school kids in, in this fast food program. So they only got, I think, 20 million pounds or something back. But even that, you know, you think the poor company having to recall 20 million pounds of beef. And so they passed a law in Texas that's still valid today, making it a felony to videotape inside a meat processing plant. So we, we haven't had too many more of those reports since that. So in addition to prions and viruses and bacteria, we also have problems with heavy metals. Heavy metals, not just heavy metals, but also growth stimulants and hormones abundantly used with animals to make them bigger and fatter and make more product, make them more profitable. Antibiotics, most antibiotics that are produced are actually fed to animals, allowing them to grow antibiotic resistant organisms that are passed on to us. Pesticides, both sprayed on their feet as well as given to the animals directly, uh, and this whole idea of biological concentration. Animal products biologically concentrate the products from their environment, especially the products we give them directly, build up in the tissues, you eat the tissues, you get a high concentration. Now, some people argue you should also not eat animals for moral, ethical, and spiritual reasons as well as environmental reasons. The environment, they argue that animal husbandry is more responsible for global warming from methane production, et cetera, than all of the internal combustion engines combined. That if you want to save the planet, you know, we need to get people to eat a plant-based diet and stop our animal dependent habits if we have, want to have a chance to have a positive environmental effect. Some people argue moral, ethical, and spiritual. They say it's not nice to take sentient creatures and torture them all their life and kill them if you don't need to and all that stuff. My argument is really your own selfish health reasons. Animal products are one of the biggest reasons why people are developing diseases of dietary excess. And just adopting a whole plant food diet that's free of animal products is going to help you live a better and longer life and perhaps help the planet survive long enough for you to live on it. I would argue, though, just adopting a vegan diet is not enough in order to uh, ensure that you live a long life. Because many vegan diets are horrible. Uh, for example, you can have soda pop. That's vegan. French fries can be vegan. Oreo cookies, for example, have no animal products, but doesn't make them necessarily healthy. So just being vegan isn't enough. You also have to go SOS free. Get rid of the chemicals that make you fat, sick, and miserable, the salt, the oil, and the sugar. Unfortunately, that's a little bit more difficult to do. Now, I get criticized for recommending an SOS-free diet, but some, because they say, in order to save the planet, we have to get everybody eating a vegetarian diet. If you make people eat an SOS-free diet, it would take them a while to adapt because they're addicts and they wouldn't do it. And as a consequence, we won't save the planet. So they're going to argue it's more important to save the planet. So just advocate vegan, don't advocate SOS free. But you see, my goal isn't to necessarily be responsible for saving the planet. I'm interested in helping my patients live a full life, live until they reach their genetic potential, go to sleep one night, have a good life and a good death. Last 20 years of debility that most people experience. 
um, you need to adopt a whole plant food SOS free diet, get some regular exercise and get enough sleep. Uh, and th that's really the key. So my, my mission and my target is help my patients live a long and healthy life, not necessarily be responsible for saving the planet. <laughs>